Hi, this is Len Furman, the sports time traveler with a bit of a different type of event than I've covered in the past. Today's episode is titled, The Beatles Invade America. 60 years ago, the Beatles set foot in America for the first time and set the record for a U.S. TV audience. New York, February 10th, 1964. I'm back here in 1964 where the Winter Olympics have just wrapped up in Austria. But I'm not covering the Olympics, because I'm focused on an even bigger event happening in New York City. The Beatles made their American debut on The Ed Sullivan Show last night inside the CBS studio at 53rd and Broadway. The show was on national TV at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. 73 million people watched it. It was the largest United States television audience ever. This is a bit of a different event for the sports time traveler, but it's similar to most of the sports I've covered in several key ways. It took place in front of a live audience. It involved a group that is number one in the rankings, just like the UCLA basketball team is this week in 1964. And it had fans that are absolutely stir crazy for their group, just like Chicago Blackhawks fans. The Beatles touched down at the newly named JFK Airport on Friday, February 7th. And since that time, it's been pandemonium in the Big Apple. Newsday writer Pat Patterson called it B-Day, signifying the British invasion had begun. 50 extra policemen had to be assigned to JFK Airport, where 3,000 teenagers and 200 reporters and photographers mobbed the upper arcade of the International Arrivals Terminal. The New York Times quoted an airport official saying, We've never seen anything like this here before. Never. Not even for kings and queens. The Beatles were whisked to the Plaza Hotel in four Cadillac limousines, one for each Beatle. At the plush hotel near the southeast corner of Central Park, they're staying in a 10-room suite, and CBS has hired 40 private duty officers to keep them safe from the crowds. On Saturday, the New York Times reported that city police and private guards patrolled the plaza lobby and were posted outside the Beatles' rooms on the 12th floor. The plaza's management had no comment on a report that it would not have accepted the reservations of the Beatles, Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, George Harrison, and John Lennon, if it had known who they were. In Newsday, it was noted that the dowdy old plaza was reported to be in a tizzy, worried lest its reputation be sullied by teenage riots, pranks, or other untoward incidents during the Beatles' stay. The Beatles rehearsed in the CBS studio on Saturday. Ray Block, the musical director for the Ed Sullivan Show, was interviewed by the New York Times after the rehearsal. He said, The only thing that's different is the hair, as far as I can see. I give them a year. Billboard's rankings of top singles also came out on Saturday, and the Beatles retained the number one spot. They're also the only group with two songs in the top 10. Here's the top 10 on the Billboard chart as of February 8, 1964. 1. I Want to Hold Your Hand, The Beatles. 2. You Don't Own Me, Leslie Gore. 3. Out of Limits, The Markets. 4. Hey Little Cobra, The Rip Chords. 5. Um, 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 um. Major Lance. Six, Surfin' Bird, The Trash Men. Seven, She Loves You, The Beatles. Eight, For You, Rick Nelson. Nine, Anyone Who Had a Heart, Dion Warwick. And number ten, There I've Said It Again, Bobby Vinton. Yesterday was the big day, the Ed Sullivan Show. The Grimsby Evening Telegraph, a British newspaper, reported that minutes before they appeared on stage, the Beatles received a telegram from California from Elvis Presley, who cabled, Congratulations on your appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show and your visit to America. We hope your engagement will be a successful one and your visit pleasant. 
Would the Beatles be able to live up to the hype? Would they be able to perform at a peak level for the largest TV audience in American history? The sports time traveler had to go back to see this. 50,000 requests for tickets had come into CBS for the 721 seats inside the theater, but I was able to watch this spectacle virtually. The first song the Beatles played on the show was All My Loving. Anthony Burton of the New York Daily News wrote in today's paper, From the moment the Beatles began by blasting out All My Loving, the kids bounced like dervishes in their seats to the driving beat. He then went on to write that there was a wild screaming, as if Dracula had suddenly appeared on stage. The screams reached a pitch dangerous to the eardrums. And in the written version of my Substack article, you can, you can see a link where you can watch the clip, a clip of the All My Loving performance, the first song the Beatles sang on television on the Ed Sullivan Show in the United States on February 9th, 1964. Throughout the song, you can hear the screams of the teenage girls that dominated the audience. Alan Paturo, writing in Newsday, noted, The four British rock and rollers weren't about to discourage the wild screeching yesterday as they sang in person to America for the first time. They and their phalanx of 21 press agents know that for every holler, there is a dollar. They played two more songs in their first set on the show. Till There Was You and She Loves You. Then they played two additional songs in a second set. I saw her standing there and I want to hold your hand. You can watch the full video of their performance of I want to hold your hand in a link I have in the written version of this Substack article. Many entertainment reporters who hailed from another generation than the teenage fans who are crazy for the Beatles had less than flattering reviews. One Hollywood columnist wrote this in today's Progress Bulletin, a a Pomona, California newspaper. The truth is that they are really pretty boring to listen to. Their act is absolutely nothing. Their greatest asset is that they look like rather likable, almost innocent young fellows who have merely hit a lucky thing. In fact, one gets the impression that they are having a private lark over the silly screaming girls in the audiences. The Beatles will be playing in Washington on Tuesday. President Johnson will not attend. Then they will come back to New York to play Carnegie Hall on Wednesday for two performances at 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Finally, they fly to Miami Beach, where they will appear for a second time on the Ed Sullivan Show, live from the Deauville Hotel next Sunday. The sports time traveler is definitely heading to Miami Beach next week, and I will be staying on an extended virtual trip in South Beach until February 25th, when Cassius Clay will challenge Sonny Liston for the heavyweight championship of the world in boxing. I can't wait. Thanks for reading.